an astronaut. See, the last time we had a look at this was when the um, the access arm was swung over in uh, the orbiter access arm in, at Cape Canaveral. When, That's right, uh, after the launch hold. When they, uh, that was the last contact with this part of the spacecraft by uh, human beings. And mm -hmm. you see a technician now on his hands and knees at the bottom of your picture, unbolting. I'm not exactly sure how that works, Joe. Do they unbolt it from the outside? They do. Uh, uh, it has dogs or levers that come out all around the circumference of the hatch, and they just stick a big uh, uh, a tool, uh, tool in there and rotate them all back in, and then the hatch swings open. somebody go up those stairs first. I'm not absolutely certain about that, but it should be yeah, Dr. Craig Fisher. Picture, there, he is. Nope, there they are. John Young. <laughs> they skipped the medical phase. They came out early. There's John Young coming down the stairs. <laughs> and that's uh, Mission Control in Houston getting a standing ovation. You can hear some applause in the background. That's from Mission Control. And we can even hear some applause way back over here at the, uh, on the edge of the desert. Yeah. Well, he forgot his co-pilot in there somewhere. Crew, uh... I think that ball-headed gentleman standing there in the blue suit might have been Tom Stafford. No, he's George Abbey, and now he's going to look at the airplane. You really are. You're looking at the premier test pilots in the whole world right there. Uh, there's a lot of people in the world that uh, can fly, but I don't think anybody has ever demonstrated any more capability.
shuttle. The future is now. Flight director Don Putty has just informed his team that we have now handed over to uh, the uh, team at Dryden, and the, this flight control team can go back into exhilaration mode. This is Mission Control Houston. Ability to put 65,000 pounds in low earth orbit, to put payloads up there uh, much more cheaper than we've been able to do it before, not having to throw away the booster, uh, will absolutely revolutionize the way uh, we do business here on the earth in ways that we just can't even imagine. It's going to be a remarkable thing, I'll tell you that. And uh, I've been thinking about it a lot. I really believe in it. It's quite a capability. It'll, it'll immeasurably improve the defensive capability of the country. It will uh, help uh, develop science and technology. I believe with the space shuttle, when we get it operational, we'll be able to do in, in uh, five to 10 years what it take us 20 to 30 years to do otherwise in science and technology development in space that we, that we couldn't do if we didn't have the space shuttle. You know, we wouldn't be able to do it if we didn't have the space shuttle and that payload capability. And I believe we'll do all those things. And the sooner we do those things, the uh, better off the country's going to be. I, I believe that, too. The pioneers of the West. He uh, brings back what John said. He says, this is a great way to come to California. All, all that came east to west, and these pioneers came west to east. But they all ended up in California. Well, I know in the space business that uh, space is sometimes recurred, uh, referred to as the high frontier. And what you have now are two new frontiersmen from the high frontier. This live coverage from Edwards Air Force Base in California, the astronauts inside that van, the spaceship Columbia did everything asked for. 36 orbits, the full mission, 54 and a half hours, picture perfect, letter perfect launch, Everything went uh, virtually flawless in outer space. Dangerous re-entry period, all that blackout time for communications. It burned through the outer stages of the Earth's atmosphere.